it actually got so bad that my dad, who was my pastor at the time, had to call me into the office and say, you know what? You're gonna have to find another church. Did you ever think like, yo, pops, like, why, why are you, why are you directing this to me? There was another deep, deep fellowshipping that happened a couple of years after that first, that first, that first. First, let's get, let's get your origin story, bro. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. All right. Um, so I grew up in a Christian household. Uh, my, uh, my parents are actually missionaries in Japan right now. Um, and they've been pastoring since I was six. Um, so like 19 years and stuff. So I've been a pastor's kid for 19 years. Um, you know, I got involved in, in sin at a young age. Um, and it, it became a cycle of, of doing good. You know, I would repent and I would do good for a little bit, but then I'd fall right back into that same sin. Yeah. And it just became a cycle to where it, it, it was, it was kind of obvious that I wasn't really having that repentant heart. Mm. Um, and so it actually got so bad that my dad who was my pastor at the time had to call me into the office and say you know what you're gonna have to find another church wow uh, you you can't come here whoa you can't come hold here. up paul slow that let's we're gonna have to camp right here we are gonna have to camp right here <laughs> so you are a pk which that already comes with a lot right right coming with mm -hmm. the pk but your own dad which shout out to your dad uh your your own dad had to boot you out the church, bro. Let's let's slow that down. Let's unpack. Obviously, right. you know, be be comfortable. I want you. Uh, I appreciate any uh, vulnerability that you have, so don't feel like you have to be a hundred percent. So, uh, but let's let's backtrack a little bit. What what even got you up to that point to have that kind of conversation? Uh, okay, so um, it it was it it uh it was. A, uh, it was, I was so, uh, comfortable with my sin mm. that I was pursuing ministry. Um, I was in the praise team. I was, you know, leading in some, in some capacity. I was, you know, heavily involved leading outreaches and, and other community and stuff. But at the same time, I was, diving headfirst into sexual immorality and trying to balance, you know, balance those two, hiding it and making sure, oh, well, we can't get caught, you know, mm. trying to cover my tracks. Um, and so it was, it was, um, it was that, you know, that bringing that profanity, that profane way of living yeah. into the church and trying to pass that off as, you know, like the church, the congregation didn't know what was going on but that that spirit was coming into the church and so when it came to light because i didn't come forward willingly yeah i was found out okay um so it it, it was brought to light it, I, I didn't you know get convicted one day and my dad was preaching on it you know you know sexual immorality is a sin you need to repent you need to live for god and i would be sitting there you know taking notes he would, you know, we pull altar calls in our church, and so he would pull the altar call. So I got, and okay, I would so get, I got to ask though. So when he was doing that, right? Because, because uh, I'm sure many of us have been in a sermon before where you're like, "Yo, how do you know about my life?" Right? But like, obviously, you know mm -hmm. why he would know about his life. Did you ever think like, "Yo, pops, like, why, why are you, why are you directing this to me?" No, okay. uh, because because I was so comfortable in my sin, I became self righteous. Mm, understood right okay. so i'm like oh so and so needs to hear this sermon oh that's really good point you know yeah sexual immorality is a sin um uh, and so you know just like all of that uh but it was never it was never piercing me it was never touching me he would get to the end of the sermon, pull the altar call i'd get up and i would play the play the guitar or play the whatever mm -hmm. for the altar call like oh yeah no i'm good you know like act like i'm praying at the altar, you know, beforehand or whatever. And, and so when it came to light and he's like, wait, you've been doing this for how long? And, you know, you act living this double life. Wow. It's obvious that, you know, you, you need, and this wasn't my first time. Like I said, it had become a cycle Okay. where it would, you know, a couple years I'd be great and then fall right back into it. And then like, I would hide it. 
I wouldn't come forward. It wasn't, it wasn't like, Hey, I'm struggling with this. I need accountability. I need, yeah. I need prayer. I need, I would hide it until it, I couldn't hide it anymore. And then I would get found out, you know, sat down for ministry and discipline and, and everything. And so it just kind of escalated to the point where he's like, look, you're not getting it. You're not mm-hmm. getting it. So you're going to, we're going to, you know, excommunicate or de uh, de fellowship you for a while. Yeah. So that you can wake up and then come back. Um, wow, man. Spoiler okay, so, alert. It didn't. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so, what, go ahead, so, go ahead. what I, so what I love about what I, what I love about what you're saying is, um, that it wasn't just a one-off. It wasn't like you did something and then your dad was mm-hmm. like, Hey, you're out. Right. Um, yeah. because it, it could be that way, right? Like I'm not going to have, I'm not going to be the pastor and have my own kid walling out and you know, whatever. So, Hey, you're done. You're benched forever or whatever. So, mm-hmm. um, shout, shout out to, to your dad for at least that. Um, and even more so to have the, um, have the accountability in his heart where he understands that hey this might be my kid cuz cuz so so what that um what that reminds me of uh is in scripture where uh Aaron's kids were wilding out right mm-hmm. and yeah. so uh you know people would be like oh hey they're doing this they're doing that or whatever and you know but the thing is that Aaron was a pushover right he he just kind of yeah. he kind of let things ride uh, from my understanding, so for anybody who like has, has different context or whatever, please go ahead and unpack. It's been a minute since I've mm-hmm. um, been in there, but uh, been at that part. So um, knowing that and kind of knowing the, the the history there or the story there in in the Bible, do you did you feel like ha- has that story ever kind of been brought into your mind at all, um, either before, during, or after that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, while, while I was out. Uh, Spoiler alert, there was another de- defellowshipping that happened a couple of years after that first that fir- that first one. Wow. Um so I it took me a while to learn the lesson. Um, but yeah. I did learn it. Um Amen. and you know, while while I was out, you know, dealing with that, um, really depressed, but really trying to, you know, find my way back, find find a relationship with God. Um because here's the thing about when you're when you're that deep into transgression and you're, you're intentionally sinning mm-hmm. yeah. um, to the point where you don't care that it's a sin anymore. Right. You know, the Bible talks about searing your conscience. Mm. And that is a very real thing because I've I have that I have a seared conscience and that it's an area that I have to guard. <laughs> You know, there's like no other, yeah. like no other, because I don't feel it. I don't feel any conviction. Mm. Even now, even a couple of years down the road, serving God, really, you know, having learned my lesson and like really working on my relationship with God. Still to this day, I'll lust, not even think about it until I catch myself. I'm like, no, 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 no. That was lust. Deal with it. Mm hmm. So, so that, that is, that is such a danger, but, um, but yeah, the, the thing with Aaron and his sons, Eli and his sons, just realizing this is how serious it is, what I was doing. Um, and I've, I've had people, Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ that have talked to me, um, and kind of pushed back against my, my dad putting me out, uh, the other pastor that are putting me out, um, and I've had to push back and I'm like, no, you don't understand. This is this serious. This, I mean, first Corinthians chapter five, they had to put people out because of this. This is one of the reasons you defellowship somebody, you excommunicate somebody. Yeah. It's so that they can be, so that their flesh can be destroyed. So their soul can get saved. Um, and yeah. it is, it is so tough to be out there, man. Um, just the, when you're out from under the covering of the body of Christ mm-hmm. and you're just released into Satan's hands. He has a field day with your mind, just depression, never struggled with suicide until I got put out of church. Mm. And mm. 
I, I I lived in Kansas and I lived in a city with a whole bunch of bridges and a whole bunch of rivers. And I'm just like, wow, I just keep going straight. I'm just go, I'm driving around town doing what I got to do. And I'm just like, if I just keep driving straight or the church I was going to uh, had an evening service that was a, a lot later than when my family would go to church for their evening service. And so I, uh, I studied to be an EMT. And so I knew how long it would take to, uh, to, to unalive myself. Yeah. And I knew how long I would have before they found me, before anybody was going to know anything was wrong before anybody. And I knew I had enough time. If I ever went through with it, mm. there would be no, there would be no, uh, no coming back, uh, from that. And, you know, so dealing with that and, and, uh, it, it, it was so tough, um, to go through that. Uh, so, yeah, I, 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 so, I so totally recommend if you, if you're, if you're, uh, yeah, don't ever do that. Don't ever steer your conscience. Don't ever <laughs> be, be attentive to the conviction of the Holy Spirit because God is trying to save you and preserve you. Hey, if you liked any of this content and you found some value in it, make sure that you like, subscribe, and of course, share it. Also, if you're interested in some more, go ahead and check out these videos. Till next time, grace and peace. Adios. Thank you.